Hello, my friends. Welcome back. Joining me now is Asha Sharma, CVP Head of Product from Microsoft AI. But it's, she's my boss. It's, she's awesome. I'm so lucky. I, I am actually. I'm so glad that we get to have a couple of 10 minutes to talk about what's going on. But the first thing I want to ask you, because you, you have actual experience working with industry and AI. Tell us, what are people concerned about? What are customers doing with AI? What's important about AI that's relevant to these kinds of companies? Yeah, I mean, AI has been around for a long time, yeah. right? Like previous company, we were building applications to help people look at a billion items that we're updating 3,000 times per second to help you have a better shopping experience. But now we're seeing that every company out there across almost every industry is turning to AI. I think it's now 65 plus thousand customers are building with some sort of gen AI in our portfolio. And for the first time, we're seeing the move from uh, prototyping now into production. There's been a few customers that I, I'm very excited about their use cases. So uh, McKesson, they're using gen AI to actually improve the processing of untouched data to save right. uh, more patients. Uh, Mars, a veterinarian health company, not the candy company, okay. uh, they're using it to actually scan and improve the response time to x-rays so they have more pets' lives saved. Uh, but then you see entertainment like NBA creating new applications that didn't exist with the power of Gen AI. And so we're starting to see the systematic scale of saving money, improving outcomes, and then generating new lines of business for the first time. I mean, this is really cool because it, it's actually improving things in, in reliably good ways. Yes. But there's got to be some principles that organizations should follow or just think about because it is a little bit different. It's not like what, it's not exactly what it used to be with coding, it's AI. What are some things that customers need to think about yeah, in order I, to make this transformation? The number one thing I tell organizations is don't do AI for AI's sake. Right. Start from a business problem, start from a customer problem, work back from there. So that's part one. Part two is that trust needs to be a part of everything you do from the beginning. It can't be this bolt on at the end. It has to be safe, secure, and private by design. And so the, the developers who are developing the products need to be thinking about this. The business decision makers that say we need to go solve this use case need to be thinking about trust from the beginning. And so those are the areas that I often push organizations on. I guess the last thing is that, you know, use cases are going to continue to accelerate with Gen AI. And I encourage organizations to start to see around corners and solve po problems that weren't possible before now that they have if they have AI. And I think those are really magic moments. I love the I love the way that we start with, you gotta have a business problem. Yes. And when you start, start with how can I make this trustworthy? I, I love those two, two principles. What are some things that like around the corner that you are seeing that businesses should be like, oh, here's something that I could use AI or do something like that. What are some things that you're seeing around the corner that maybe help? Yeah, I mean, the new class of models, especially coming out of open AI, but even more broadly, have an incredible set of reasoning capabilities. So I like to think about it as the summer was high school level aptitude, now we're at PhD level aptitude. Nice. And so the rate of model uh, capability is accelerating. And we're seeing that every model is now going to become multi-model and therefore every application will become multi-modal. Right. I think the second thing is we're seeing the world go from single model to multiple models per application. So Andreessen Horowitz just did this study and it showed that on average organizations are using three or more more models for their application. And so we're thinking a lot about how can we help customers find the right model for the right job at the right time. And then the third is agents, Yeah. right? I mean, we're, we're talking a lot about that, but at its core, it's how do you take a simple application and create a system that adapts and continuously learns and can autonomously take action for you. And, and that's the cool thing, right? That, that for me, it's this, this well, I had this revelation like with you all, because I, we work on the same team, right? Where it's knowing the right model and then putting them together yeah. to do really cool things. That's where you're gonna get a lot of value. Exactly. And I love that. So let's talk about Azure AI Foundry because we, we talked about principles, we talked about customers and what they're doing. What What is Azure AI Foundry? How should people think about it? And then let, let's get into some of the components. we got about five. Yeah, so Foundry is the AI application platform for the modern enterprise. It's data-driven, it's AI-powered development, it's AI-powered trust, and it's AI-powered management for your estate. You can think about this as a comprehensive set of models, customization services, observability, 
and of course the trust infrastructure right. underlying it to help you deliver these applications that we're talking about. So let's pick each component in turn, starting with trust. How does Azure AI Foundry help me as a decision maker once I've found, or as a, a practitioner, once I've found the, the business case, yes. how does a, a Azure AI Foundry help with this trustworthy AI? Yep. Tell us about that. So one of the things we believe very strongly, as you know, is principles is not enough. You need to take principles and action and product capabilities and put that all together. And so this week we announced several new capabilities. So one is risk and safety evaluations for images. So in this multimodal world, we not only want to help you evaluate text-based uh, queries, we want to help you evaluate image-based content right. to input output. The second thing that we announced is AI reports. So this is, think about this as governance. So you can start to set up reporting to understand how people are using your applications and set limits. The third is the management center. Right. So again, how do we move from helping builders build applications to the decision makers observing what is happening yeah. and then allow you to look at resources, capacity, costs, all of those things directly in one console. And the cool thing about Foundry that, that I, cause I, I work on this stuff, right? So. But, and I have to use early versions of it. The yeah. thing that I found most impressive is how now we're starting to see in Foundry, the, the portal that you go to, how you can switch from, I'm making something to I'm managing something. Yes. And it's very distinct. And I noticed that just literally like on Tuesday when I was getting, making some videos, tell us about the, this as a management surface what are you thinking about when it comes to Azure AI Foundry? So the number one thing I hear from customers as they're going from production or prototyping into production is they need to understand what's working. Right now, a lot of how platforms are set up are their point in time evaluations. It's just upfront, what is the ROI? Right. But we know that models are uh, being dropped every single day. Yes. So how do you start to experiment with models in production without rewriting your application? How do you observe what metrics are moving in what direction? How do you optimize for certain outcomes and certain ROI? All of that is what management is about. And I think that is the new era that we're heading into. It's not just how do we build a killer application, but how do we improve that killer application and how do we manage it and monitor it over time? And that's the thing where for me, this all started to become like, oh, this is a real thing. Cause making cool demos is like, I do that all the time, but getting over into now we're managing this thing for longevity that's where I think it's at. So, uh, so thank you for that. The next thing I want to ask you about in the last couple of minutes is, tell us about the Azure AI Foundry agent service. What does that mean at a high level? So I'm, I'm very excited about agents. Uh, I've been building them for a while now. But the thing that we saw was our enterprise customers couldn't actually use a lot of the APIs out there with the enterprise grade promises that they're used to with Azure. And so think about the agent service as a way to wire up memory knowledge from your enterprise actions. So then these applications can take autonomous uh, acts on your behalf and be smarter and learn over time. And so we are announcing this this week and then launching it later this year. And we'll have over a thousand enterprise connectors. Um, and so, you know, I'm pretty excited about this. And this is cool because I, I look, I started building these prototypes of stuff like a you year ago. I, I was this. literally skeptical about this. But if you think of an agent as a AI microservice, it turns out yes. that, that I fell into writing the same kinds of things, yes. same patterns and the agentic yes. framework that we have and that we're doing basically and codifies. And I think patterns. these will be the core primitive and organizing layer of every code base that's out there going forward. Yeah, and like, uh, like I'm just to, to selfishly, when I wrote this demo this morning, I found that I had to maintain state in this thing that I call the state bag, which is really just state an bag. agent thread. Okay. It's a thread, right? And and there's some there's some really cool stuff in there. Okay, so uh, top of mind for people that they need to look at as they go. We have about a minute and a half left. Yeah, I mean, one of the biggest things that we're seeing as organizations, again, start to move into production is customization. And so you, it's models are necessary, not sufficient. Uh, and RAG is amazing, but we're doing a lot more than helping you with retrieval. That's we're helping you with query writing, using finely tuned small language models to help you improve your relevance. We're bringing Azure AI search directly into your uh, developer environment so you can now ground your model that you get right out of GitHub. But where I believe the market will go is, again, not just taking these blunt models for everything, but fine tuning them or even distilling with teacher models 
for a certain outcome, whether it's a cost profile, an efficiency profile, or a task profile, to actually get those magic moments. And so I would just say, you know, look, come experiment uh, in Foundry, come experiment in GitHub, give us your feedback. I think the time is now, uh, and I'm excited to see what people build. Yeah, I mean, we got we got about, what, 40 some odd seconds, and I it totally, sp- I, I'm glad you brought up the distillation and the fine tuning, but also GitHub. Yeah. And there too, tell us about that. I mean, so, Look, we have the largest IDEs in the world, right. and uh, that's a really powerful tool to be able to help developers everywhere. And so our vision is that every application is powered with AI and can improve outcomes and improve the way that we work and live. And so GitHub is a great place to do that. We have the most popular models there. You can also uh, rag those models. You can experiment with that's those right. models right. Uh, in GitHub Copilot, and you can quickly get into production. So. Well, but if awesome. more excited. This is awesome. We've done the end to end with you, Asha. Thank you so much. Uh, to learn more, go to the AI Foundry page at ai.azure.com. See you there. <laughs>